Our next speaker today is Sora Shankha Maji from Calcutta. Uh, he is a tram and rail enthusiast. The session itself will be conducted by Atulya Sina. Atulya, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, Atulya Sina and Prashant Mishra, whom you just heard, are from the same batch of the Indian Railways. And I had the privilege of knowing both of them when they were still training officers. Atulia today describes himself as a railwayman by profession, but a rail fan by choice. He joined the Indian Railways Service of Mechanical Engineers in 1988 and is currently working as the additional general manager of the Southeastern Railway Zone of the Indian Railways. He has had about 35 years of railway service. He has extensive experience of working on six zonal railways, in addition to working at the diesel locomotive works that manufacture, used to manufacture diesel locos and today manufacture electric locomotives at the Research Design and Standard Organization of the Indian Railways and with Rights Limited, a public sector undertaking, which is the consultancy arm of the Indian Railways. He is interested in many aspects of the railways, particularly his history and heritage. He chairs the Heritage Committee of the Southeastern Railway Zone and enjoys interacting with rail fans in this role. He is an active member of the Rail Enthusiast Society and has delivered four monthly talks. And there's another one in the offing. He has also contributed a number of articles in, in the Rail Enthusiast Society magazine. We will tell you more about the magazine and the monthly talks uh, in the session tomorrow. So over to you, Atulia. Thank you very much, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my great pleasure and privilege to introduce my good friend, Mr. Shaurav Shankho Maji. Now, as we all know, rail fans are of many types. There are some who like to travel by train. They concentrate on the travel experience. There are others who rarely enter a train, but they focus on reading and writing about railways. Then there are those who click pictures and make videos and now share them through social media. Then there are those who collect model trains, who run model trains in their basements and some who make model trains. But there is only one Shara Shankho Maji who is an expert in all the fields which I have mentioned. And uh, in fact, he would he should be called as a rail connoisseur, not just a rail fan. With his uh, multiple talents and the uh, time and energy which he devotes to uh, rail fanning is uh, exceptional. He wears many hats. I first came across him as an expert on Howrah Station. He has he has made a deep study of how Howrah station was set up and how it has changed over the centuries it has been in existence. And he has made a number of very well uh, researched presentations on this topic. He's a member of uh, the Southeastern Railway Heritage Committee, a very valuable member, I should say. He is, apart from uh, mainline railways, he uh, he has a lot of uh, he has done a lot of research work in narrow gauge railways which used to be uh, around calcutta but are no longer in existence and in fact i came to know about this through shoro's works apart from railways he is also interested in trams which will be uh, which is a part of the extended railway family from the technological viewpoint today uh, he'll be thinking about trams. He is a founder member of the Calcutta Tram Users Association. And recently, he was instrumental in organizing the 150th year celebrations of trams in Kolkata. So I'm sure you're all looking forward to hearing from him. Over to you, Shoro. Thank you. Am I audible, by the way? Thank you so very much. Uh, is my screen being shown over there? Yeah, please go ahead. 
Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, green is quite fine. Thank you. Please continue. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so recently we celebrated the 150 years of Tramo is in Calcutta, um, not of CTC, uh, to be precise. And, well, it's not in a very good shape. So today we'll look at what uh, is uh, the whole thing that went about in the last 150 years um, and Calcutta tramways from 1873 to 2023. Okay. So we'll talk about the early days. Uh, just to be sure, has the screen changed? Uh, please go ahead, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, early okay. days, yeah. Yeah, right, cool. So the permission for the first tramway to construct was conferred by an act way back in 1867. So six years before actually the first route that came into being. And government of West Bengal appointed a committee to do a feasibility study like we do even now, uh, which actually presented a detailed plan um, with multiple routes, but only one route was, um, uh, was uh, made into reality. The committee submitted a report on 24th August, 1870, took almost three years to complete it to the government of India. And government of India sanctioned that plan in 1871. Now, incidentally, around that time, we'll have to understand that there was two different railway zones working uh, within the Bengal precinct. Two major railway zones, I should say. There were several others, Eastern Bengal Railway and East Indian Railway. Now, the produce that was coming from the Eastern Bengal Railway side, or mostly of which is in Bangladesh right now, were coming to Chitpur and to Shialda stations. Now, for the rest of the country to get that produce, uh, it was very difficult to transport the goods from Shialda or Chitpur station to Howrah station. Chitpur had a very good convenient way of transporting them because Chitpur terminus, the goods terminus was located right next to the river, whereas Howrah was also next to the other bank of the same river, a couple of kilometers down south. But for Shialda, it was a big problem. So one of the reason why the first route was chosen to be from Shialda to Armenian Ghat was because of this, that they wanted to transport the goods from uh, East, Eastern Bengal Railway to East Indian Railway Riverside Jetties on the other side of Aura Station. So the first uh, route uh, was commissioned on 24th February 1873. Uh, initially, it was about 100,000 rupees sanctioned for the whole construction, but they actually completed a marginally higher cost of about 150,000 rupees. It was open for commercial runs on 24th February, and we just celebrated 150 years. Um, but the problem was that although it was opened for um, transportation of goods, there were people who would always board those trams, and it was very difficult for the company to transport goods in them. As a matter of fact, it closed down pretty quickly uh, on 20th November of the same year, uh, after incurring a loss of about 500 rupees per month. Again, in 1878, an independent promoters, uh, two of them actually, um, chopped out an elaborate tramway system plan. Again, it was extended and spread all over the city. And this time round, they executed an agreement between themselves and the Corporation of Calcutta in 1879. The agreement, um, came into being and, and with the Calcutta Tramways Act of 1880. And soon the Calcutta Tramways Company Limited was registered in London. This actually paved way for what we know as the tramway network of Calcutta of today. Uh, the second stint started on 27th October, 1880, although officially on every single record book, it's mentioned as 1st November. Uh, again, between Shalda Station and Dalhousie, which is known as Bibadibag at present. The formal inauguration, uh, of course, happened in January 1881. Initially, of course, the horses were used as a motive power. Um, but, well, the Australian whaler horses were so tired because of the hot and humid weather of Calcutta 
that they they were a complete failure. And soon the CTC or the Calcutta Tramways Corporation were looking for some other motive power to run their trams. And very soon they opted for a steam locomotive. From 1882 onwards, as per the records say, um, on their Chorongi route, which would be around the Espanol area. But the steam locomotive had several issues. Uh, one of them was the suit was actually coming to the houses next door and people started complaining. And since uh, the steam locomotives were slightly of a higher speed, there were a few non-fatal accidents happening over here and there around the Maidan area. And that actually brought it to the end of their services. But by 1895, the CTC had 186 trunkers, 19 miles of route length and about 1000 horses. Um, 1895 is also important because that is when India's first uh, tramway was electrified, but that was not in Calcutta, that was in Madras. People generally have this myth associated that Calcutta was the first city to have electrified tram system, but that is not true. It was Madras. And obviously, uh, most of these thousand horses that CTC had that delivered poorly and Calcutta or Calcutta Tramways Corporation or CTC were soon looking for something even better than horses or steam locomotives to electricity. So in 1896, the very next year, Kilburn and company submitted a proposal to introduce electric traction system for trams in India. It took them about six years to actually uh, finalize the whole thing and implement uh, that particular traction system in one of their routes. They appointed a committee in 1897 to oversee the proposal. And the agreement was accepted in 1899 and stated that horsepower should be replaced by electric traction by December 1902, although it took a bit longer. Um, and along with converting the entire system to standard gauge. Now, here we should uh, remember one thing that the Calcutta tram was actually was running on meter gauge initially. And then they shifted to standard gauge, which is the gauge that they're still continuing. So even before East West Metro came into Calcutta, Calcutta had a standard gauge well running all over the city. <sighs> So the very first tram car became a, electric tram car became a reality. And on 27th March, 1902, the first tram car started from Esplanade through the Maidan or the green patch that you have uh, in the middle of the city towards Khidirpur. The contract for electrification process finally rested upon Dicker and company who also supplied a lot of material for the tram cars throughout uh, 19, 10, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. And they also supplied the very first electric tram cars for Calcutta. Uh, the whole network was converted. Um, uh, eight routes with electric traction was completed by November 1902. So the other side of Calcutta also had the tram network. Uh, we are going through the history and then we'll come to why we are talking about this and why is it important to talk about the history while we were talking about the museum. Of course, the heritage connection is there. So when CTC entered into an agreement with the commissioners of Howrah in 1905, they put in their first step towards tram services on the other side of the river. By October 1908, uh, there were two routes functioning in the Howrah side, uh, north to Badagat and south to Shippur from Howrah station. Shippur being a stop terminus without a loop, um, actually forced the CTC to run double headed trams over there with obviously control at both ends. They used to turn around the trolley pole so that you know it's easier to uh, fly the trams easily. The Calcutta and Howrah tramway network remained totally isolated till the new Howrah bridge where was opened in 1943. Uh, again, from 1931, the newer tram cars started coming and these were kept on being added till 1939. At the beginning of 1940, CTC had 139 such cars out of which only five were built in India. This actually made the Calcutta Tramways Corporation to be the owner of one of the largest fleet of such articulated tram cars anywhere in the world at that point in time. So independence, a few more tram cars here and there with the K-class 
from 1939 to 1951. Uh, and with the act, Calcutta Traumas Act of 1951, the state government took its first step towards acquiring a possible right in the Calcutta Traumas. It's the act stated that if needed by January the 1st, 1972, or any time thereafter, for a fixed price of 3.7 million pounds, the state can purchase the rights. In 1959, there were 470 units carrying an annual ridership amount to, well, we call the 40.49 crores. 1950s also saw a drastic change in services. Earlier, Calcutta traumas used to be denoted with color coding, single color or double coloring for tram routes to denote their destination. Tram route numbers were only introduced in 1958. It was given numbers one to 50, although only 26 were in use at that point in time. The color coding was needed because it, there were linguistic issues, people not understanding English or uh, people who neither understood English nor Bengali. And also because there were plenty of people who could not read or write at all. The 1967 brought about many unpleasant realities, including a lot of neglect uh, after the Bengal government started acquiring the rights in the CTC. On 19 July 1967, the Calcutta Com Traumas Company Act was passed, which paved the way for the government to take over the management of the tramway company. This was the first concrete step by the state to acquire uh, stakes in the tramway company. Right after that, within five years, actually four and a half years. For the first time in the history of tramways in Calcutta, two Howrah town routes to Badagat and Shippur, both the Howrah town routes actually, were closed down in 1970 and 71 respectively, and were formally closed down on paper by a decree by the West Bengal government in 1972. Similarly, routes in the Calcutta side started to close down. The Nimtalaghat section, which is to straight, head straight north to North Strand Road, from Howrah Bridge to Nimtalaghat was closed down in 1973. The last blow was, of course, was given by introducing the amendment to the previous Act of 1967 through the Calcutta Tramways Company Act of 1978, A78, which made way for the formation of a new company titled the Calcutta Tramways Company, 1978, limited with its ownership lying completely with the state government of West Bengal. However, even after all these issues in 1980, the West Bengal government did celebrate the centenary program of CTC with pomp and grandeur. And a funding from the World Bank did help the traumas to restore some of its battered and bruised rolling stock thereafter. The rolling stocks in 1980s, from 1981 to 1988, came from uh, Jeshap and Company and Barn and Standard Company. Both were based in West Bengal um, with Jeshap in Dhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdhamdham
the decline actually started off uh, from the 1960s itself. Sociopolitical turmoil, other issues, employer employee clashes, employee passenger clashes, um, the partition and the Bangladesh war and the influx of migrate, my, my, you know, uh, people from Bangladesh and uh, you know, a huge increase in population in the Calcutta city. So it, during that time, the socio-political situation was such that even a one paisa increase or a one rupees increase in later years of crown fairs actually brought in uh, you know, terrible violence with uh, passengers clashing with uh, tramway employees, police, um, sometimes the employees because of, uh, you know, political, uh, uh, you know, lineage, clashing with the government or, or other, other employees. So the decline actually started from 1960s itself. And it actually became, uh, you know, a very strong decline uh, in the 19, late 1970s. 1980, it got a little pumped up because of the World, uh, World Bank funding and the extension of routes between um, to Joka and uh, Bidanagar, but it continued. And the decline could be uh, blamed on the following uh, issues. The first fatal flow was, uh, it was the tram network was not properly integrated with the existing transport system. So initially, although there are several routes close to the railway stations and other major points from where uh, you know, passengers could interchange from one transport to the trams, closing down of the routes stopped that particular flow of system. Uh, the metro construction started from 1970s, which actually closed down several routes, several major routes. Um, and then came the Shialda flyover. Shialda was one of the busiest stations back then, and there was a tram terminus right in front of it. People used to get down from the train, walk about 50 meters, and there you had you know, a loop and a couple of other tracks to board all the trams to everywhere in Calcutta. When the Shialda flyover came up, the construction started in 1978, I think. Um, the tram terminus was abolished uh, on 31st March of that year. That actually brought down the ridership uh, to a great extent. Uh, we call it, it's actually a term that we use in our uh, you know, tram uh, fraternity. We call it the hopper over because uh, when the flyover was built, um, the flyover was not actually above any road as such. Uh, there was one road that crossed it underneath, but apart from that, the underneath uh, the, uh, the was full with hawkers and their stalls, and it was given to them by the government. So, finally, in the Trump pattern, we call it the hawker over. Uh, of course, the proposed extension that I talked about to Sorlet and other parts of the cities didn't work out. One was from Taligans to Chadapur, um, the other one to Sorlet. Of course, the abolition of the Havra town network that actually contributed to uh, the decline also. Then in 1993, the Havra station connection was abolished. So you, even now you could board, okay, now it's, the route is not working, but uh, the tracks are there. So uh, you could board a tram from the other side of the river, but just like Shea station, there was a terminus in front of Havra station also, even after the closing down of the tram tracks within the Havra Town. Now, the suburban passengers who used to come in the morning and go back at evening, it was very useful for them to get down from the train, go to the subway, come up right in front of the tram, and the tram, and go to their respective destinations. From 1993, it was not uh, possible. Um, abolition of several sections. Abolition of several sections included the Nimtola and other Gallup Street and several other sections all over Calcutta. De reservation of the tram tracks. Um, trams, tram tracks used to have uh, mostly pri their private own private right of way. Now, when congestion started uh, from 1990s onwards, the government started to uh, de reserve the tram tracks and make them open for uh, you know, uh, vehicles, other vehicles too. Did this actually made tram tracks unsafe because they were still in the middle of the road, uh, but without any reserve track, without any platform, 
without safe access from the side of the road. And of course, with cars and buses in front of them, not cannot run at their own speed. That brings us to the impact of buses and autos on trams, uh, which is very interesting because um, till 1980s or so, uh, on tram routes, there is very few buses and almost no autos, of course. Um, but then suddenly, uh, from 1980s and late 80s, 90s onwards, we saw buses and autos being given permit to run on the tram routes. This actually, uh, in you know, kind of the decline of the tram routes all over Calcutta. And of course, the whims and fancies of the policymakers and the police, they uh, stopped trams or cartel routes at their own wish. So it brings us to the grim reality to 2023 with just three routes operational. A few routes is supposed to come back once the East West Metro work at Bivadi Bag or Dalakusi, as many of you know it, uh, is over. But then, till that happens, there are just three routes operational as of now. One is the Esplanade Gariahat route, the other one is Esplanade Shambhaja route, which was closed for one year but started just before the 150th anniversary. And the third one is completely secluded and not connected to the rest of the network, the Taliganj Paliganj route. So then, does that mean that the tramways in Calcutta are uh, museum bound? Well, that time will tell, but we do have a tram museum. And now let's look at it. The tram museum is called Smaranika, and it was inaugurated on 29th September, 2014. This is how it looks. Um, this is a tram car renovated and restored, a 1940s tram car actually and restored. This can actually run with all the exhibits and everything inside. We'll go inside in a while. Uh, and this is parked at Esplanade Depot right next to the upcoming Metro uh, Terminus. So the first car of this museum tram has a cafe in it. Mm, it has old pictures and everything uh, of Calcutta and tramways in Calcutta. But this coach is simply a cafe with restored seats from an old tram. Uh, the tables were later put in, of course, and you have your choice of foods and drinks over there. Mm, it stays closed on Thursday for those who are interested uh, on other days, it stays open till eight o'clock, I think. The second coach, uh, I'm actually looking towards the first coach. Uh, you, you have a vestibule, which is not normal in trams, but it's more like a Metro kind of a, we don't have vestibules in Calcutta tramways uh, over here, but for this one, since the access is through only the first, um, first coach and through only one door, they have created a vestibule and through that you can come into the second coach. The second coach has all the exhibits in it. It has old pictures, uh, tram models, old hats, caps, badges, tickets, timetables, controller, and a couple of other things. We'll look at some of them now. This is uh, from the Ooh. 1940s, and uh, this is actually a coin changer. So you see those, you see those um, metal uh, uh, brackets over there. These they actually used to hold coins and rupees of different denominations, and these coin dispensers dispensers were very common back in those days. These are a couple of armless tassel badges and nippers. Nippers were also used in railways. Of course, railway had their own uh, different kind of armlets and badges back in those days. These are monthly tickets. Now, those who uh, those who get to see the you know uh, advertisements on railway tickets and other things these days, it was actually common back in those days to have you know uh, first page or the cover page of a monthly ticket, uh, they were generally of two pages, um, you know, with a, with an ad. And then the second page, you would have your monthly details written down. Um, these are some of the examples kept in that museum uh, in the second coach. These are some of the old tram tickets. Of course, um, they range from any time between 1930s to 1990s. Um, and at the bottom and the bottom right hand side, you have Calcutta Melbourne <clears throat> tram festival tickets also. 
they kept some of the models although uh, of late when uh, during the 150th anniversary i was there i realized that you know, at least two of the tram models are missing i am not really sure where they have gone or where they are still there but these are the some of the tram cars that uh, citizy still owns the first one is a ball it's called bolaka and bolaka was actually made in 1918 uh, not in the same model this is a refurbished model based on a lisbon tram i guess so originally it was made in 1918 the second one is uh, one of the howra water cars which could be from any time between 1920s to 1930s the third one is a refurbished uh, ac tram uh, with fiberglass body and the fourth one is a flat wagon this one is very interesting and doesn't really come out and we were uh, we were unable to bring it out even during the 150th tram parade that we had on 26th of february uh, last week last sunday uh, as it was stable in such a place that uh, it was that the route was not connected anymore so these tram cars actually used to carry uh, tram rails or tram tracks on them and when there are some repairs happening i have also seen them carrying concrete sleepers which are absolutely new uh, the tramways don't generally use concrete sleepers but in 2016 and 17 around the maidan area uh, they laid concrete sleepers on the tram tracks over there because the ground was slightly unstable and it was not on the road but on a reserve path the only reserve private right of way the tramways have in calcutta these days but anyway after the cyclone ampan that route is still closed uh, we just really don't know when that will open we have been hearing that it will open for the last two years but it still haven't so these are the tram cars that is to carry materials and other uh, stuff when there's a big engineering work in progress anywhere on the network this coach also houses time tables now this is from um, and uh, you know, 1957 and before the howra um routes were closed down this one shows um, the through services from to howra terminus to dalhousie or bibadi bag where the major offices were uh, situated they also have a controller over there now calcutta tramways has several controllers english electric uh, uh, are the more common one they have the gc controller they have the fuji controller and surprisingly for a very few trams vail also made a controller for calcutta tramways of course uh, they have kept only the english electric ones over here now this another uh, museum uh, well i would say this exhibition ground kind of a thing i wouldn't call this a museum museum but it's uh, anyway was converted an old depot was converted Uh, on 20th december 2020 and was open as tram world now this particular place has all the trams stabled over there um surprisingly or not so surprisingly for us some of the trams were still running in perfect condition but were stabled inside the tram world and we don't know why so this is a uh, one uh, look at the tram world if you look over here you will see other areas of tram world uh, with tram cars uh, uh, ranging from the old l class and k class and newer fiber body modified fiber fiber body uh, trams and also some barn standard and jeshop rolling stock lying over there they also recently opened a cafe and uh, you know um, uh, refreshment area right next door and it has become popular of late but uh, i don't know if this is the way if tram cars could be preserved uh, you know in a haphazard way most surprisingly is this the fw2 one of the oldest working car um, which is not under the shed and actually stays outside under the sun and rain uh, so i mean i don't know i mean uh, for the older roll, rolling stocks it should always be taken care of in a much better way however here in tramwell we are seeing that there are the newer rolling stock inside the shed and the older ones are outside mm, it, it, at the condition of this one fw2 is actually uh, deteriorated of late well so talk about calcutta tramway network i think the whole network is a running museum see the last new rolling stock uh, 
absolutely not, not refurbished. The last new rolling stock was built in 1988. So they are already 35 years old. And those 1980 rolling stocks had quite a, for the quite few of them, they had older bogies used underneath. So they already had, you know, older running system, older uh, bogies running, uh, you know, for them. But if you look at, if you want to look at what old rolling stock look like and what we did during the 150th celebration, let's look at these things. This is on the first day of uh, inauguration of the 150th anniversary of Calcutta tramways. Uh, several trams were added. Uh, and on 26th, this was on 24th and on 26th Sunday, we had a tram parade. We originally asked for uh, about 17 tram cars. Um, of course, um, uh, only eight were granted. Uh, we failed to bring out the flatbed wagon car, uh, IW work, uh, internal works car, and um, a couple of other historically important tram cars like the 600 series, the first one from J Shop, and the 700 series, for 701, first one from Burn Standard, uh, or the last one from each of the makers. Um, but well, we did it with eight cars, and this is just two of them. This one, HWC, is uh, possibly a remake of um, an old, uh, uh, you know, HWC stands for Howrah Water Cars. So water cars were basically um, tram cars with water tank, water tank in the middle right over here. Uh, that is to clean tracks because the grooves of the tram tracks is to be very dirty uh, because it's outside, it's on the road and there are dirt and other things. And that actually caused derailment. So the water cars used to clean those tram tracks. So this is a Howrah water car, which basically suggests that it was initially used in the Howrah section of the tramways. So this is one of the uh, uh, rolling stock that we used. And then came Bolaka. This is possibly originally the oldest rolling stock that we have in uh, the Calcutta tramways plate right now, um, built in 1918 refurbished in uh, 2012, 2013. Uh, but this is again, probably uh, refurbished from a rail scrubber car, RS2 possibly. Rail scrubber is again, another tram car that the Calcutta Tramway Corporation used to use to scrub the rails or clean the railways uh, so that uh, the dirt doesn't accumulate within the track and the guardrail and trams don't derail. This is of course our signature uh, tram car for um, celebrating the Calcutta Melbourne Tramway Festival during the 150th year last week. Uh, this is from, well, it says 1948, but there is a mystery with this thing. Calcutta Tramways Corporation has possibly the most complex rolling stock data or record uh, anywhere in the world. It is complex because they never followed a single system all throughout their 150 years. They changed classes of several trams. They renum renumbered uh, trams. Um, so the original 498 is actually uh, stabled in Gadiahat Tram World, the tram that we, the exhibition ground that we talked about a while ago, uh, as SC6, uh, which is basically staff car six. Um, now this was renumbered renumbered as uh, uh, 498, and we just did a calculation and thought that it would be around 1947-48 uh, is their time. But obviously, it's more than 70 years old because the last of these uh, the L-class trams, as they were called, um, were built in 1951. And if you look at the front of the tram cars, this is slightly a perspective view, but if you go to the side, um, uh, they actually look like an elephant's head. So these were very fondly called over here by the tramway employees as Hathi Gari. Hathi meaning an elephant. Gari is of course a vehicle. This is another tram that we have used um, uh, during our uh, uh, you know, uh, 150th anniversary. Again, this one is dating back from the 1940s uh, and this was uh, converted and painted by artists over here to celebrate uh, the 150th anniversary. This is one of the newer cars, again, refurbished in 2012. Um, uh, no, uh, this one was refurbished in early 2000, I think, 2003 or 2004. Uh, this was originally called as Punolata. 
this car was made in 1975. Um, again, when I said this car was made in 1970, they actually used older trucks and bogies and other parts from older trucks. Uh, view of uh, Balaka once again and the Trump parade that was happening, part of the cavalcade actually, uh, there were nine in total. We see only one, two, three, four, five, and the sixth one is on which the photographer is standing. Uh, this is just outside Gariahat Tram Depot, right after the Trump parade started on 26 February. Um, again, when you talk about history, heritage, and museums, the workshops are also a place of museums over here. This is a view from, uh, well, I couldn't get a permission to use other photos, uh, you know, from the workshop at Nunapur. But this is just one of the views that you see right after entering Nunapur workshop. Now, on the right, so you have the primary uh, car shed, as we like to call it. Uh, beyond that, where the track turns right and there's a door up ahead, there are several workshops um, which takes care of a lot of tram thing and all those things they have their own foundry which is not working anymore and those foundries and the machinery actually dates back to 1920s and 1930s so even the workshops uh, and other depots where they have a lot of uh, trauma material they are all uh, belonging to an era which is long which are long gone even the dc um, substations use uh, materials and other equipments from 1920s and 1930s. So everything related to, when I say the whole network is, is heritage and is a museum, is a mobile museum or a moving museum. I mean, it is absolutely true. There are tram cars which are still using or probably not running, but still have Bombay uh, bogies, Bombay tram bogies underneath them. So these are amazing stuff that you, you can cannot believe, but they actually exist like this. Again, this is a nice, nice night view of uh, what I, when I say, it, if you look towards the right, the car shed, this is how it looks at night. And the right-hand side trams is uh, probably the oldest one over here in existence right now, uh, which is not, ru not running anymore. That one has the Bombay trucks in it. Obviously, when I say this, this actually M or M means shall we go for modernization or are they heading for museum? Now that only time will tell. Questions, please. Or discussions or suggestions on how to improve the tramway network or what should be done and what needs to be done. Tell you all yours, any questions? Uh, uh, yes. I'd, I'd like to uh, make a few comments. First of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, Shoro for a very interesting and informative uh, presentation. Uh, I have spent eight years in Kolkata and two different stints, but I have been visiting Kolkata for many years before that. So I'd like to share a memory about trams. About 25 years ago, I was in Kolkata for a few days and I met an American gentleman and a tram was passing. So he asked me, how much does a ticket cost? Now in those days, that uh, there were two classes in trams. There was a first class and there was a second class. Correct. The difference was that the second class did not have fans. The first class had fans. And uh, the ticket was 25 pesa for second class and 30 pesa for first class, the one with the fans. So I told this gentleman that the, the ticket costs less than a cent. And he didn't believe me. He said, you're making fun with, you're making fun of me because you can't have any payment, which is less than a cent. So <laughs> that was the, uh, the trans are very popular in those days. And uh, they were very, very, very economical to travel in. You could get a season ticket or a weekend ticket for something like two or three rupees and you could travel as much as you like uh, throughout the weekend. Correct. So, uh, Shoro has uh, uh, traced the history very well. And apart from that, he's talked about uh, the museums at two locations. One is the Esplanade location, 
where there is the smaranika tram car which has right. which has been preserved which has been shown and uh, i had a chance to visit this about 3 years ago and it was in very very shabby condition and i am glad to see that it's uh, improved a lot i'm tempted to go there again and the other one is the tram world at the um, gadia hat uh, depo tram depo and that's where we had the tram yatra or the tram parade recently that was a very very interesting very lively and very well attended uh, event with visitors and participants from all over the world so well you have uh, you have another place where you could and uh, two other places in calcutta where you could see trams one is a uh, uh, tram car being used as a tram cafe in new calcutta next to mothers wax museum right and the other one is um, at a park in south calcutta near patuli called benubono chaya park they have two tram cars uh, over lying over there of course one in a very good restored in a very polished way kept at you know transport museum in gurgaon but uh, not in calcutta okay what about the one in uh, city center one that is i think um, made on, it's a model it's not an original tram car city center one tram was the tram that was used during the 300 year celebration in 1990 by the state government it was a model uh, from an old tram car which was hauled by two Horse. horses i think and yeah. it was part of the parade in 1990 and then it was kept at city center one i see so it's a replica and uh, fact, a replica using a lot of original parts i see and in fact in fact they have a a horse also next to it it's not a yes. real horse but it's a yes yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, shauro sanjay mugherjee uh, yeah. an interesting thing uh, a conversation i would like to sort of uh, share with everybody uh we've been interacting you have been interacting i have also in my in individual capacity been interacting with uh, the uh, managing director of the west bengal transport corporation Correct. and uh, how how to uh, bring tram cars back uh, one of the suggestions of course was that why don't we tag it with the schools there are certain uh, uh, routes which have more than a dozen schools for example that the shialda to garia hat part of which is already working has a dozen Correct. schools and if we can uh, tag it like instead of school buses we can have school trams running mm. along at those times like a parade then mm. this could be one of the ways by which you could uh, use the tram cars these are safer these are cleaner for the young children uh, for going and coming to school at school time uh, he has been mulling over it but he is not yet uh, talked about his uh, intentions mm. but what he did that day on uh, 26th that i spoke to him uh, was how to modernize that m of yours that yeah. instead of the lower rem why not modernize we have examples of trams all over the world which are less noisy which mm-hmm. are more uh, energy efficient mm-hmm. uh and which can ultimately be air conditioned so that it is dust free they are dust free uh, right. can they not be uh, utilized so that uh, uh, you know uh, uh, people feel less inconvenienced uh, on trams even on congested routes correct yes. so what he suddenly came out and said well i like the noise that gives that mm-hmm. heritage value to the tram now this was the md's uh, feeling uh, well so far as the tourist circuits are concerned definitely mm-hmm. his point is well taken but right. i do feel that with a noisy city like calcutta if we can reduce noise uh, especially we can put uh, uh, more insulated uh, uh, wheels absolutely and uh, and, uh, and also the mo- traction motor can be less noisy uh, and instead of uh, having that good old uh, bell as a horn we can use a, a more scientific horn maybe uh, trams would uh, regenerate themselves especially in places where there are uh, it's more crowded in fact uh, some of the uh, uh, media people who had brought out uh, certain uh, uh, interviews where people said in in crowded areas tram should not be there i have an opposite feeling that in crowded areas in fact trams will be more utilized if you do not have as you said in the initial stages 
parallel modes of transport allowed on those tracks. Supposing you don't have autos, you don't have buses, and leave only trams there and walkways, then perhaps it's a very doable thing. This is my idea. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. But here, may I also make a point of joke? Uh, when we were working on the east-west metro alignment, I may have uh, the others may be knowing. Uh, this has got a political connotation. Please don't mind. Uh, I had uh, uh, suggested uh, to the then Chief Secretary of West Bengal that why don't we make a 1,000 uh, car car park under the Esplanade Terminus when we are making the uh, uh, East-West Metro uh, Junction Station there in mm -hmm. one mezzanine. And we uh, stop people, uh, buses uh, or motorized vehicles going into the BBD Bagh area, the central business mm -hmm. district. So mm. people come, park their cars, come by metro, and then take trams there only, and it will be walk walking, or those who can't walk, it will be tram. But many of the European and American cities also have it in downtown areas. We right. the, And the Howrah going buses should be diverted via the Strand Road. Now, mm -hmm. the, the second part was immediately done, if you know that now buses hardly go through the central business district. But right. the first class, the uh, first part, when I spoke to the chief secretary, Mm -hmm. uh, he said, you see, politically, uh, once we remove the cars from Dalhousie Square or BVD Bug, instead of walkers, you will only find hawkers. So it's better to keep the <laughs> <laughs> cars intact so that the road space don't get encroach. And politically, it's a very difficult decision to remove hawkers. Correct. Yeah. So he said. <laughs> but this is just a joke. And it, well, it's true in our political scenario. Yeah, given a chance, they would have built another hopper over over there, <laughs> but still not, still not yeah, do anything else. I'd like to share some of the comments which have come in the uh, in the chat box. Govind Krishnan says, "Great presentation." As for tramways, I feel Calcutta tram should be modernized, routes extended, and old trams preserved in a museum. Correct. Yeah, so I think I think a lot of uh, us think the same way. Yeah. Then. Uh, Kalyan has posted some uh, old photos, some very interesting photos of a wooden body tram, old tickets, uh, passes, and so on. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Anubab Day says cars, mostly trucks, loading, unloading goods are parked often over the train tracks, resulting holdup of trams, increasing travel time, resulting passengers choosing different and faster mode of transport. So you can't blame the trams for that once the tracks are de-reserved. I think that's what Shoro's view. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. That's quite true, actually. <laughs> uh, Anubhav Dhe has another, uh, has another question. Can the Route 36 restarted uh, post the construction work on Kolkata Metro Green Line? Route 36, uh, the stopping of Route 36 has nothing to do with Calcutta, Calcutta Metro's um, construction. They constructed a new loop so that Route 36 could continue even when the Metro work was ongoing. Mm -hmm. It's um, the cyclone Amphan destroyed every single infrastructure around Maidan for Route 36. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. since uh, 2021, it's almost two years now, they haven't restored the traction wearing around the Maidan area. The reason given being the tenders were called and there were on just one party interested in it and they are not going to entertain that. They are at least need two parties, you know, uh, vying for that. Uh, well, that's a reason given to us officially. So I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the reason it's closed now and it could open any moment, any time in future. There have been a number of reports in the media and some speculation also that this route will be restored because of its tourist value. Yeah. But yeah. the, uh, there's nothing concrete so far, it seems. Well, I mean, they, they allotted one crore for a new loop around Victoria Memorial. But uh, the wearing needs a little less than one crore, but that's not allotted. So <laughs> mm. I don't know where it's going, actually. That, that's very unfortunate. Uh, anyway, some uh, very highly appreciative comments have come about this presentation. Uh, Anubhav says it's an amazing presentation, Sharoda. Mr. Raghunandan says, superb presentation, amazing depth of knowledge, real labor of love. Uh, Supreet says, kudos to Soro for a great, well-researched presentation. Mr. Vatash says, fascinating history of trams in Kolkata. Apoor Bahadur says, fantastic presentation, presentation by Soro. Now, here's an interesting question from Supreet. 
given the level of road congestion in kolkata perhaps the practical approach is to replace the trams and electric trolley buses that draw current from the existing electric lines now this has been done in a number of cities uh, yes uh, what's your view sure well if very few people know but in back in 1977 on 22nd of january 1977 Calcutta actually um, did a trial run with trolley bus- buses, and the trolley bus was built by Vell. Mm-hmm. Um, it uh, the the trial run continued on twenty second, twenty third, and twenty fourth of January, uh, but then they realized that it's uh, it will not be successful. That was done on the reserve tracks of the trams that they already had, um, but then they realized it will not be successful because of the traffic and other conditions, and uh, it's not going to be viable at all. also the trolley buses actually need higher investment absolute new investment new technology and the maintaining that technology will be uh, again again be very costly for tramways they already have the uh, infrastructure and everything and the workforce uh, available over here with a little bit of training modernization is probably the best way to go forward uh shono if i may add uh, one point uh we had a discussion uh, the other day with uh, the uh, chief electrical engineer of the wbtc mm-hmm. and he said about the trolley buses mm-hmm. uh, the uh, pantograph mm-hmm. that is designed mm-hmm. it's a, a, a there are two parallel uh, there are two trolley two trolley poles, trolleys yes. exactly mm-hmm. those mm-hmm. poles it is very difficult in many of the places in kolkata tram mm-hmm. network to uh, have this uh, turning circle absolutely uh, it, it absolutely. goes off that is why actually uh, the technical reason is that's the main reason why you couldn't have trolley buses even if you could afford them yep yep there are several issues actually so uh, just another one uh, these work uh, these work very well in wide roads where there's an ample space and the turning circle is large correct correct in fact the trial done in 1977 was done between bihala and joka uh and uh, now i mean sorry uh, not behala and joka behala to somewhere towards majerat uh, um uh, you know on a stretch on the same same road the roads are quite wide over there uh, on the diamond harbor road but even then they realize it's not not going to work out and vale actually made that trolley bus there were newspaper ads from vale as well as from ctc uh, that conveyed the message uh, but well they didn't go for it and even now even if you had have advanced tro- trolley buses available calcutta i mean it's just going to create a you know a further mess because you are just bringing a new bus with a uh, attached trolley pole so <laughs> i mean the, you don't need the tracks yeah, yeah. you don't need the tracks but you still you have, have to, we you have, have electric buses now with, so that yeah, is you have a wide road with little traffic then yeah. you, can, you can run regular buses or battery buses no battery buses <laughs> are coming a big, in a big way so uh, there is there is no real justification for having an entirely new system exactly technology has changed tremendously now so uh, there is a small question from mr rakesh vata she says has park circus tram depot survived sure would like it to has answer. survived as a bus depot uh, not as a tram depot anymore okay so i think uh, that brings us to the end uh, uh mr david churchill says many thanks for a fascinating presentation and uh, thanks david shekhar priyadarshi says a very depressing story of the demise of calcutta tramway sheer callousness of the politicians uh oh, well followed by excellent presentation on history of calcutta tramway thank you perhaps it's uh, too early to say demise but yes it it does seem like a very well we are fighting for uh, modernization and revival of yes, tram yes. networks in calcutta so let's see so perhaps it's too early to use the word demise but decline certainly it has been course, a very yes. unfortunate decline and uh, we are still optimistic that there will be a revival so and, one uh, question apurva uh, what are the sharpest curvature on trams in calcutta well that is something that i cannot answer right now i'll probably have to search for that and let you know okay thanks uh, mr viraf mulla says can't we have pantographs on trams but we do have pantographs of we course do. we can have pantographs in trams that is the first major step of modernization that the calcutta tram was needs the trolley poles are very problematic they go off the wire and that creates a lot of problem mm-hmm. 
Hmm. But that hmm. is part of the modernization plan. And if they don't invest behind all these things, uh, nothing will happen. I mean, all that modern Trump saying all excuse over the my, world. Excuse plan. my coming in, but uh, your yep. time is up. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Your time is up, Atulia. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Shoro. We have, we have less you. than a minute to go. Okay. Sure. Anyway, thank so, you very much. It was a very, uh, let's say, educative uh, presentation, if nothing else. At least I learned a hell of a lot. Thank you.